I'm going to go through a problem where it's the non-dimensionalization of a governing equation. And so we basically, uh, we have our problem here. A model differential equation for chemical reaction dynamics in a plug reactor is as follows. Um, U times the partial derivative of C with respect to X is equal to some quantity D uh, times the second partial derivative of C with respect to X minus some quantity C. Uh, I'm sorry, K times C minus the partial derivative of C with respect uh, respect to T, uh, where U is the velocity, D is a diffusion coefficient, K is a reaction rate, and X is a distance along the reactor. Uh, and finally, C is the dimensionless, uh, keyword here, dimensionless, concentration of a given chemical in the reactor. Uh, first, we need to determine the appropriate dimensions of D and K. And next, we need to use a characteristic length scale L and average velocity V as parameters uh, and rewrite this equation in dimensionless form and comment on any pi groups appearing. Um, so the key thing here is to understand or to see that um, C is a dimensionless quantity. So C here, C here, and C here are all dimensionless, meaning that um, to determine the appropriate dimension of D and K, the only the only uh, variable here that has a dimension to it is going to be u. Oh, sorry, I'm not writing that right. U, and so we can take d and k and relate it to u to determine what those dimensions are. And uh, we can do that by just, you know, really just looking through um, u. So we have u times the partial derivative of d with respect to x, and I omitted the c because it's dimensionless. So we're not going to focus on it. So u um is you know is is some distance per some time and then the partial derivative of d with respect to x uh, x we know is a distance so that's a length so basically we have some length over some time times some uh you know something over one over the distance of something and so these are the dimensional quantities for you with respect to um, u times the partial derivative of um, d with respect to x. So uh, so now we're going to go through here, and we're going to just equate d directly to um, directly to um, u and the partial derivative with respect to x. So uh, a couple of things. We know that we don't know d yet, but we do know that 1 over some length squared is just like that. And we also know this term here, which is L over T times 1 over L. And so essentially what we need to do is determine what D is to make this, um, make this statement true. So L's cancel, and we get D. Sorry, let me rewrite this again. So we get D over 1 L squared is equal to 1 over T. So what value of D do we need to make this statement true? Um, well... We just need it to be L squared over T. Because 1 over L squared is equal to 1 over T. And what we see is the L squared's cancel. We get 1 over T is equal to 1 over T. So that statement is true. So then, thus, we know we can conclude that D must be made up of the dimensions L squared over D. Uh, of D. We can do the same thing for K. We can say K. Um, is equal to again u times the partial derivative d uh, partial derivative with respect to x, which is just going to be l over t times one over l. Again, these cancel, so it's what uh, value? So what? Actually, what we see here, since the l's cancels one over t, so k is just equal to one over t. And so now we have the um, the appropriate dimensions for d and k. Now, next, we need to use the, car the, the two parameters L and V, average velocity V, and length scale L to rewrite this equation and make it dimensionless. So one common, a common way to non-dimensionalize equation is to define a non-dimensional quantity for, um, you know, for, the, for the, the variables that we need to non-dimensionalize. So the U has dimension, so we need to non-dimensionalize that. So we're going to represent the non-dimensional version of u with u star and say equal to u. Well, we know u is velocity, so all we have to do is divide by the parameter velocity. Then that cancels out dimensions. Now we have a non-dimensional uh, quantity. 
we also have, we actually have time in this case. So T, T star is essentially T. And then what we can do, we only have L, we only have V. We know V velocity is made up of a distance per unit of time. And then we know L is as a distance quantity. So if I divide by, um, oh, I'm sorry, I can multiply by V, which is just, you know, some length over time. So now those two time values cancel, but now I have length. So I need to divide by L, um, right? Because we have, you know, T, which is a dimension of times, times some velocity, average velocity, which is just length over time. These T's canceled. Well, then I need to divide by the length to get a non-dimensional quantity for T star. So thus we have that. Uh, finally, we have X star. And X is just going to be, you know, some distance divided by length. That's non-dimensional. And we're good to go. Um, and we'll actually need to do the same thing for, for uh, D and K. So remember, D is equal to L squared over T. Um, in order to non-dimensionalize that, we can um, essentially divide by V. So that gives us you know, technically, since we're dividing by V, it's time over length. So these T's, so if I rewrote this one over V, that would be time over length. You can see that these T's canceled, this L cancels. And then I essentially need to um, also multiply by one over L, right? So just basically uh, L squared over T times, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Uh, divided by v over l so now we non-dimensionalize that but uh, we will take care of that portion later and then same thing for cal uh, k so k is one over t um, all we need to do um, well we can divide by v one over v again having that same thing where the t's cancel but now we have l so, uh, l which is going to be in the denominator so we need to multiply by the length scale L, L. And now we have a non-dimensional quantity. And so now all we need to do is take all of these non-dimensional quantities um, and then this non-dimensional quantity here and then this the non-dimensional, these two you know, quantities that will non-dimensionalize our D and our K. And we need to just start plugging them into our equation. So that's going to look like this. We're going to have U star times the partial derivative of C with respect to the um, non-dimensional quantity X. Again, C is non-dimensional, so we don't have to worry about it. It's equal to, well, we have D, but now we need to make sure that we non-dimensionalize it. So that's multiplied by VL. Again, we're just solely using the parameters um, that we were given um, in the problem statement here. I'm sorry, let me, V, oops, V, and L. Uh, again, we'll go back down here. Well, I'll just try to do it like that. Um, times the partial derivative, the second partial derivative of C with respect to the non-dimensional quantity x squared uh, minus we have k. Again, we're going to multiply it by our non-dimensional um, uh, quantity to non-dimensionalize k. Just like so, and then I'm oh, sorry, times c again a non-dimensional quantity minus the uh, partial derivative of c with respect to the non-dimensional quantity of t, and so um, so there we have it. We have our um, our differential equation here has now been non-dimensionalized, and so. Again, you know, maybe referring to your textbook or um, whatever it may be, but it'll, you know, these are typically common um, dimensionless quantities that might, you know, that might appear. And so one that shows up is actually in, uh, I'll try to highlight it here, this quantity here. So we have it written as, oops, sorry, let me write this correctly. We have it written as D over VL. But um, if we invert that, we have VL over D, um, which is just the actual, uh, is the pi group for uh, the mass 
transfer pecklet number. And so that is another uh, common pi group that um, that shows up. And but that is the only one. So so there you have it. That's how you go through and you non-dimensionalize a governing equation. Um, always, always, always make sure you um, rewrite any dimension quantities in non-dimensional form. And this is common to use the asterisk. And then again, you know, we were able to get to this solution because we were able to equate it to u, the only um, two velocity, the only parameter, the only variable in this equation that actually had dimensions to it. So, so there you go.